Okay, we back with part five. We're going to get right down to it because I don't know how much time I'm going to have uh, with you. I could literally check out of here, this, check out of this physical body tonight. You know, I'm looking to get out of this physical body, this physical creation, see? Um, okay, so we have been going, I'm going into part five. And if you saw part five, we were just talking about the oneness. This is a continuation of that. And I want to get back to the Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe booklet, because that's going to guide us and make sure we stay on track. That's why we have the aims. All right. We went over the third aim, which was the unexplained spirit law, the law of nature, the powers latent in man, Romans 8. 1 through 4, and John 1 and 9. Now I'm going to go to the fourth thing, and I'm hoping to get through with all these aims today so we can move on. This is very important that we get on down into it. Fourth aim is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures. This is what Dr. Kinley wanted us to do. He said the fourth aim was to, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. I already got it, so let's get to it. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A, 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 a study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is it is the unto my salvation. I just told you about the atonement. That's it. Yahweh Shai came. He ontological perfection. He was seen in visions and dreams. And we said in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. But then he came down in a physical body and walked the face of the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah. Or as well, they called him uh, Emmanuel, God with us. But it wasn't God in us until Yahweh Shai, see? Yahweh Shai, or God in us, that's salvation. So when he comes down, that's a death. When he gets in a body, that's a burial. He resurrects out of that physical body, and he ascends back to the Father. And then he comes back on the day of Pentecost and gets in you, gets in me. And when that happens... He said, and you shall know if you've been following along with me. He said, you shall know in that day. You shall know because you're going to know that I'm in the Father. The Father's in me and you are in me as well. Your life is hid in your house side. You don't have a life. You. I said in the last, in part five, this, the, the, the previous section of this, that the Y-O-U doesn't exist. He's not saving Y-O-U. He's coming for E. W E that you his wife Yasharala see and that oneness that he is with her that's the atonement that's why when Paul spoke about a miss a marriage he said I, I he's not speaking about a marriage but I'm speaking of a mystery he was talking about the mystery of how the creator himself <coughs> excuse me will get down in a physical body walking his own creation and this is a great mystery as I told you, my teacher told us, great is the mystery of godliness. All right. And we're going to come across it again as we move forward. But you got to understand that you don't exist like you thought you did. Okay. The scripture says, and we can get it. The scripture says that the souls of, um, the souls of man belong to God. Let's get that for a second. Okay. Let's go over here to Google. Souls belong to him. Ezekiel 18 and 4. Ezekiel 18 and 4. And it reads. Behold, all the souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so 
also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now the soul that sinneth is the one you thought you, thought you was. That's got to be cast down and out. He got to get rid of you. See, and that's something that you can't do. You, you're not capable of doing it. That's why it's such a miracle for him to get rid of you and show you that you are part of the atonement, the oneness, the revelation that the whole universe is him, including you, right? And that for ages and dispensations, for even more ages, I mean, why should this marriage stop? Because I take off this flesh. See, when the law of the spirit of life is in you, then I don't, I don't need a physical body to be alive. See? So, and the proof of that was when he, uh, David was talking about building the tabernacle. And I was, I said, no, you can't build a tabernacle. You got too much blood in your hand. He said, your son going to build it, Solomon. And Solomon built a temple. Well, that temple that was built in Jerusalem was signifying they took all the things out of the tabernacle, the precious thing, and brought them into the temple. That's just showing you that when you take off the flesh, there's a temple not made with hands. See? And that's the creator himself, the sanctum of sanctoriums. It's just like right now, you're looking at the sky, you look at the trees and the earth and everything and the people and everything around you. And you're like, oh man, this is, that's that and that's that and that's that and this is me. That's the wrong perception. This is all Yahweh Elohim. This is all Yahweh. Manifested as a bird. Yahweh. Manifested as a, a lion. Yahweh. Manifested as a rainbow. Yahweh. Manifested as the blue sky. Yahweh. Manifested as the universe. One. See? The atonement. At one man. I'm trying to get it over to you. See? And then you look at yourself and say, well, well that's them. This is me. <laughs> and that's the wrong procession to have. See, let's get that. So you see this right here. He says, all the souls are mine. Let's get heaven was named under one name. Okay. Now here it is. Acts 4 and 12. Salvation exists. Look at this. Four and twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay, that wasn't what I was actually looking for, but that's true too. Yahweh Shai. Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation. Okay. So, bear with me just a moment. I want to go over here and get what I was talking about. What I was actually talking about. Heaven and earth should be named one name. Ephesians 3 and 15. Ephesians 3 and 15. And it is, and it reads, it's about the atonement, the one, the one, man, at one, man. that's what we're talking about. 3 and 15. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Let me go back and read 14. For this cause, I bow, this is Paul, Speaking to the, the children of Israel that were in Ephesus, the Ephesians, so-called, just like you here in America and you so-called an American, they was called Ephesians. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Hamashiach, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. See, Paul had this revelation. 
You got to understand that. If you don't understand Paul had this revelation, man, you missing the, you missing the full glory. You missing the full glory anyway because if you think you exist and if you think you can work your way into the kingdom, you're really robbing the most high of glory. You really are. And you need to repent and just don't let your sins weigh you down. Just move on. But you need to repent. Truly. Because uh, this is his thing, man. Uh, you know, you're going to see it here. You're going to see it here more and more as we go. Um, and I'm just letting the spirit lead me right now. I don't have anything written down. I'm just letting the spirit flow, man, in this house, man, as he as he wills. Okay? And let's go back over to our aims. But as you see, as all of heaven and earth is named. See that? Heaven and earth is named, man. <laughs> See? Now with 2 Timothy 2 and 15 it led us to that. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 said, study to show thyself approved. You're not approved unless you're doing this. Study to show thyself approved. You are not approved of the Most High if you don't understand what I'm going to show you right now. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Why would he say rightly dividing? Dividing what? Rightly dividing the truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Why would I need, this is what Dr. Kinley taught us. You got to know what age and dispensation you talking in or what, what's going on and what age and dispensation that you preaching in. Um, Dr. Kinley used to tell us, you need to understand the context of who's talking to who and then what age and dispensation is that conversation going on. So that would be rightly dividing the word of truth. For you to be talking about the law of sin and death in this age and dispensation, you haven't come out of the other age yet. You stuck back in the other age, see? And you're not rightly dividing. Rightly dividing would be understanding that that age ended at Pentecost. See, Pentecost is still happening. If you've been following along, I just said that in the previous tape of this. Pentecost is still going on right now to the closing moments of this age. And we are up on the closing moments of this age. T trust me. Okay, I'm talking about a full-fledged consummation. Flaming vengeance on them that know not the Yahweh and obey not the gospel, the gospel being what I'm telling you about, the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and him coming back in you and in your temple and you being atoned for, see, at one minute. This is the revelation. But I know it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. I always explain it like life catching up on itself. Here you are, you've been living life, you've been going forward and doing whatever. And um, you've been thinking that you exist. You didn't have no choice. The Bible said it. The scripture said it. I have placed the world in their hearts. Let's get that. Let's get it. He placed the world in your heart, man. So you didn't have no choice. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. Look at it. So you was talking about how small his sanctuary, his sanctuary getting even smaller. Because you got a bunch of cats out there that oh, they can't stop talking about what they said, what they did. So-and-so taught us the truth. See, you got all these parts and pieces when it's really just one. And that one is Yahweh Elohim Bahashim Yahweh Shai. You see what I'm saying? Yahweh Elohim. That's who that is. That's who everything is. If somebody taught you the truth, that was Yahweh Elohim bringing you to the truth. 
Give him the praise. Give him the glory. See, he's not going to share his glory with no other, nobody else. My glory, he said, well, my glory will I not give to another. He mean that. You're not going to get no glory. A lot of cats thinking 144,000, you know, they, man, 144,000, man, that's over the ages and dispensations, man. He might have five or six of 144,000 in this, in this particular dispensation. I'm exaggerating, but I'm trying to make a point. He might have 15 or 20 of the 144,000 in this age and dispensation. See, this is rightly dividing the truth. Some of them might have been already in the spirit world. Some are already in the past on. See? But what you got to understand is when he says he comes and he's going to have crowns on his head, when, when Yahweh come when he got crowns on his head, that ain't just him conquering these nations, man. That ain't nothing. We're talking about an eternal Elohim. We're talking about an ancient of days, man. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? And he has always, we got, I'm going to show you here after a while. It might not be tonight or today, but uh, he has seven ages and dispensations, man, that he has planned out. This is his plan. This is knowing your father's business. And we are now pressed upon this closing age, this age of grace, um, which he gave man time to repent. Of what? Of the idolatry. What is the idolatry that I've been involved in? Well, you've been worshiping your damn self. You thought you existed. That's idolatry. You've been idolizing yourself. When you looked in the mirror, you thought you existed. You looked at you and, oh, look at me. Look at the car I got. Look at the house I got. Look at all the clothes I got. I was I was made, you know, the principal of so-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. I was this and that. Whatever. I joined this sorority. I joined that fraternity. I did this. I did that. You think about you did all this stuff. But see, the father, the father said, folly is set in great dignity. He got you, you know, so far off, so far into yourself, into vanity, that you can't see, see? But in truth, it's him doing all these things. The proof of that, we're going to get that. This is flowing perfectly. But I want to read that to you there. Um. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. I thought I said 14. Did I say 14? What did I say? Hold on a sec. Bear with me. 11th chapter. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work. See, that Yahweh maketh from the beginning to the end. Look, man, the work is the fact that he's all things manifested in the whole creation. And you got to come to the knowledge of the truth to recognize that so that you give him all praise and all glory. Otherwise, you coming in some other kind of way trying to steal his, you a robber and a thief trying to steal his glory. Oh, our camp did this, I did this, and, and I'm so and so and so, and, and we the first ones that said that. And, you know, I'm arguing with this camp over here because they don't believe it. Man, look, I, don't, I ain't arguing with no camp. Ain't none of them camps my servant. So since they're not my servant, I ain't nothing to say about that. The most high, he the one got something to say about it. You ain't gonna never hear me talk about nothing. I don't, I don't care about that. Them camps can do what they want to do. Right? Because there's one. <laughs> what else am I going to say, man? Some of us have ran ahead and we at the end already. The revelation. Okay? And you're supposed to get this before you take off the flesh. Otherwise, you'll just be in the lake. See, the Father is the lake. The Yahweh is a consuming fire. See? But he maketh his ministers flames of fire, right? So how can fire burn fire? Fire won't burn fire. But if you're not him, you and your work's going to be burnt up. See? So that just, that's plain. All right, let's move on. So you see here, he set the world in their hearts. The ones that can't see this, can't hear this, 
because Yahweh, he blinded them. He set the worlds in their hearts. He made it so that they look. He that, he says, he hath made everything beautiful in its in his time. See? He's talking about everything beautiful in his time. You know, it's a beautiful thing that comes with the knowledge of the truth. And that's in your own time. He shall set them in order. He's doing that. See? I have seen the travail. I'm sorry. I jumped. He hath made everything, verse 11. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that Yahweh maketh from the beginning to the end. I will work a work in your day that though a man proclaim it to you. I'm, I'm sitting here testifying and proclaiming it to you. They won't believe it. Let's get it. I will work a work in your day. I will work a work in your day. Back. Oh, okay. I got a couple different scriptures here. Okay. Habakkuk 1 and 5. Behold, ye young, uh, behold, ye among the heathen. Now he's talking to the children of Israel. You among the heathen. Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. Wonder marvelously. See, this is a marvelous thing to wonder at, man, I'm telling you about. And the only way you're going to be able to see it and understand it is that he reveal it to you. That man, the universe and everything in it, all the stars, all the moons, all the nebulae, all the everything that you can see in the whole universe. And then mankind upon the face of the earth, as little as he is. That's why the that's why he said, What is man? <laughs> why would he do that with man? Why would he show himself to man? We have the ability to have the knowledge of the truth. See? He didn't get that to the lions, he didn't get that to the bears, he didn't get that to the giraffes or fish and none of those creatures, they're all him too. Fido, my dogs over there laying down, they him too, but they'll never know it. He didn't give the knowledge to them. That's why he said a man without the Holy Spirit, or without the Holy Spirit is as a natural brute beast. You don't have the Holy Spirit, you might as well be a beast. You might as well be a natural brute beast. Because you don't understand the oneness or the atonement that you are the creator manifested as who you are. This is true. Okay? Let's see what Habakkuk said. Behold ye among the heathen. We among the heathen. Right here in Babylon. And regard. He said, pay attention. And wonder marvelously. Wonder marvelously like, dang, man, for real? Oh, man. Wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told to you. I'm sitting here telling to you. I'm telling it to you. But somebody's going to still sit here and say, oh, yeah, but that's him and this is me. Not seeing the oneness of it all, see? Man. Okay, let's get back to the uh, Ames. Okay. That was 2 Timothy. Study the show thyself approved unto Yahweh. John 5 and 39. We read that before, but we'll quickly just revisit it really quickly. Okay? I'm going to jump real quick and go right to it and get out of there. John 5 and 39. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. Search the scriptures. We already know that when he says search the scriptures, Yahweh Shai came in at the what? Post-Diluvian age. He came in at the end of the post-Diluvian age, uh, 33 years 
to go before he closed out that age. All right. Um, you know, Moses, Abraham, all those guys was in that same age after the flood. And Yahushua came in after that, at the very end of that age, to close that age out. Okay. Um, there's some other deeper things I can share with you, but I won't share it at this time. But I can, I, we'll eventually get to it. Okay. Um, but um, so he came in to close out that age. The flood ended one age. Adam coming out of the garden, being put out of the garden into the creative age. See? Then after that, you had the anti or the post diluvian or the um, pre uh, anti diluvian age. I'm saying that right? Yeah, anti diluvian age, which is before the flood. And Noah closed out the age. Then from Noah down to Yahweh Hamashiach, he closes out the age, being crucified on the cross and being resurrected, ascending, and coming back already in the Pentecost. See? People are waiting on the second coming. He, didn't, he should have already come already. In you. See that? This is the truth. And when that happens, you'll understand and see that one, that oneness and that atonement that I'm talking about. In that day, you shall know that I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, and they are in me. See, that oneness. Okay? Um, atonement. Um, let's read on. So, that was that. Romans 1, 19 and 20. This is important. Excuse me. Romans 1, 19 and 20. This is really good here. We digging deep now. We getting ready to get deep on you. Romans 1, 19 and 20. First chapter, 19th verse. What does it say? Because that which may be known of Yahweh or Yahweh is manifested in them. For Yahweh have showed it unto them. Now we're going to get into showing you in a few minutes how that tabernacle pattern that was given to Moses out there in the mount not only the, the head cavity, the chest cavity, and the abdominal region follow after the most holy place, the holy place in the court round about, but all the instruments inside of the tabernacle follow after your physical body as well. We've proven the existence of Yahweh uh, Hamashiach. See? You know, because in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you, you don't have no excuse. Look what it says. I didn't say it. The daddy said it. My father said it. For... The invisible, okay, let me go back, 19, uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20, because that which may be known, there's some things you can know about the creator, and that which may be known of Yahweh is manifested where? In them. It's manifested in you. For Yahweh have showed it unto them. Now, the question is, what did he show, and whom did he show it to? He showed the law of the spirit of life. And he showed it to those that were already elect, chosen from the foundation of the world. So that down here at the end of the age, you was going to see like, oh, see? Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifested in them. For Yahweh or Yahweh have shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen they're clearly seen is what he's saying Romans 1, 19 and 20, one more time. Because that which may be known of Yahweh or Yahweh is manifested. That means it appears in them. For Yahweh or Yahweh uh, have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world 
are clearly seen. How? Being understood by the things that are made. Even what? Like things like what? Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. He said, you made up after me. A head cavity, a chest cavity, and abdominal region. These three being one. You can't deny that I'm one because you actually are showing one. <laughs> See, we don't have no excuse. It's not hard to understand. This is simple. And simple means one or without any other compounds put into it. That's why he's pure spirit. Yahweh is pure spirit, meaning there's no other contamination. There's nothing else mixed in or nothing else into that. He is ontological perfection. And when he comes down in righteousness, you're going to see here in a minute, he manifests in righteousness. Is just Yahweh Elohim. It can be seen in visions and in dreams, the form of a man, right? And everything else that emanates from him, that cloud, is just stuff, man. He just, that's his stuff. And he do what he want to do with his stuff. Right? Look at what it says. And read on. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh. 